bem-vindos a mais um episódio do Hanging with the Pros aqui no Don't Panic, It's Organic. E hoje uma entrevista muito especial. A gente vai entrevistar a nossa, fazer a nossa primeira entrevista internacional e eu não poderia ter escolhido uma pessoa tão especial como esse cara que está aqui do meu lado aqui, Fernando Angulo, Head de Comunicações da SM Rush. O cara tem um histórico assim enorme dentro do marketing digital, então espero que a gente possa explorar muitas ideias dele, aprender muito com ele e ter mais um, mais um bate-papo de altíssimo nível, como sempre aqui no canal. Fernando, thank you so much for accepting this invitation. It's been a while that we haven't catch up, so we look, we meet each other like around the world in events. So I said, what, who could I ask for for the first international interview for my channel? Then Fernando Angulo, Head of Communications from SCM Rush. Tell us about, like, for those that have been living under a rock, who is Fernando Angulo? <laughs> Hi, Felipe. Yes, I, I, I believe we met at least in 10 countries all over the world. I remember uh, Finland, I remember uh, UK, Peru, um, Mexico. No, not or Mexico. Colombia. No, or, I think or, South America, it was Argentina, Chile, Argentina, Argentina, Chile. Chile. Oh, yes, yes. Home so, country, right? Yes. The, the, yeah, a lot, lot of countries. Um, there's going to be a lot, lot more, I, I, I believe. Of course, Hopefully. my name is Fernando Angulo. I'm head of communication at Sam Rush. I've been doing uh, digital, market, digital marketing for the last uh, 10 years or so, uh, working for Sam Rush the last nine years. So my entire career was in this, in this amazing company. And if you are related to digital marketing overall, uh, I believe you have heard about SEMrush. Definitely, definitely, yes, yes. Who hasn't? Here in Brazil, as you know, it's one of the most popular tools and I bet people will be thrilled when we publish this interview with you. There will possibly be more questions around it. We might have to book a second, a second one, but so... Your, right. How did you get into digital marketing? Can you share? Well, me? yes, of course. Um, I believe so that when I was starting my, my overall career, studying in the new university, I was curious about a lot of things, about technology, of course, about, about uh, personal relationships, about uh, basically about everything. And I built a, a page. I, I created my own homepage, uh, uh, just expressing my, my thoughts. So I created my blog. And I'm talking uh, about uh, 2005 or something. Uh, the, my, my first blog was awful, was really awful. So I hate it so much, but it was mine, right? And I, and, and I uh, find that a lot of people from different countries were commenting there. And that was really fantastic for, for me because I was studying at that, that time in Russia. I, I moved from Latin America uh, to, to Russia and I was studying there. So I need to communicate with, with the people. Um, after a few, few years, I just created that, that blog. I forget about it. Uh, but I was thinking that I need to reach to more people in order to find a job, right? And uh, actually, The internet was the main reason I found a job as a translator, then as economist, then I started working as a salesperson, then I was working with uh, CRM platforms such as Salesforce, and finally a company called, uh, well at that, that time was SEO Quake, I, I believe if you are related to SEO, uh, you know the toolbar which is giving you a lot of Uh, information about SERPs, uh, li uh, links, about traffic, about everything. So I started working for uh, SEO Quake, and it happened that uh, SEO Quake was one of the products of SEMrush. So I started working immediately for SEMrush as well. When we started with, well, when I started working for SEMrush, we were like 17, 18 people, uh, but there was no uh, market, a marketing department department um, um, and we uh, started working on marketing stuff so I'm talking about eight years ago from the beginning uh, right now we're about 800 people where more than 900 people are ready with several offices in, in different parts of the world and um, all the knowledge that we acquire 
during um, establishing that process, some mar internal marketing, marketing team, we learned a lot uh, from uh, our mistakes. So we did a lot of mistakes, several mistakes, but at the end, uh, that was our just impulse to go further with something bigger. Right now, we have more than 5 million users. We are one of the top five tools in the top, uh, well, actually, in the uh, trust pilot. They, um, <clears throat> they are positioning us like the uh, second most popular marketing platform. So that's something really amazing for us. Incredible. So just a little bit more about your career in SEM Rush. You started at, in SEO Quake, another very famous tool for the Brazilian audience. I would say two of the most famous tools or most used tools together with Yoast in, in Brazil. Everybody that you talk about, you know, they are either using it or have used it previously. SEO Quake, I bet, is installed in many, many uh, browsers like Chrome or Firefox of the SEOs here in Brazil. So how did you went from, I think you told me the last time we met, we were in, in Argentina, that our famous marathon that we did with your friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Last year. Yeah, it was last year, yeah. And you said you were employee number 10, 5 or something in SEM Rush. How was that trajectory from number, you could you tell me the right number in a minute, to head of communication? How, how was your, could you share a bit with that from with us, please? Oh, yes, definitely. So I started my um, career in digital marketing as a salesperson. So that sounds very strange, right? A salesperson uh, working in marketing. Um, the story is something like this. I um, work a lot right now, not, not, that, not that much, with CRM platforms. And I worked a lot with lead generation tools and with lead generation platforms. Um, but at that moment in SEMrush, they didn't have any sales established process. So I was, I was asking, so in order to have more qualified leads, I believe that we need to do some marketing, right? Um, the guys from there told me, <laughs> Oh, yes. So let's start with marketing. So, okay, I only have my own ideas about how to do marketing because I have this web page, because I have, I have some fans. And we started with, uh, doing influencer marketing because, of course, SEO Quake, SEMrush, they had a lot of fans. They have a lot of um, SEOs around the world just loving the tool. And they were supporting us a lot or already on social media and uh, different platforms, blogs, right? Uh, forums. So we establish a process just um, testing. Okay, we're gonna open a um, new uh, beta tester system for influencers. Let's uh, attract some people, let's engage some people. Um, we uh, have plans to develop a new feature. Let's ask uh, our users. So I, uh, I work with influencers, I work with the customer success team, I work with the sales team. Um, I mean, as a part of it, I work with the uh, content marketing team, with the PPC team. I actually work with uh, all the teams that are right now in, in, in SEMrush. Uh, so it was part of it. I, I uh, established the process. I created the, the process inside of the company and I just uh, move around. When one process is, uh, is working already as an engine, right? Uh, you are moving, you are moving uh, really fast you need to change to another process. And I, was, and I was doing that. So I was working with basically all the processes inside of, of, of the company, and we got a lot of experience. Of course, um, uh, we have many ad advisors. We have people that were saying, okay, I believe you are going the, the right way, uh, but sometimes they were telling so many stuff that we don't need it. And we say, okay, thank you for your opinions, but we are gonna go that way, not the way that you were uh, t telling us. And surprisingly, that was a right d d decision at, at, at some point. Uh, so um, working with different processes helped me grow with different different positions in, inside of the company. Oh, that's, so that's I was doing everything inside yeah. of the company. Yeah. yeah, I can see like you were like connecting the dots, right? Not just like yeah. <laughs> not the marketing guy or the sales guy. And I think that's it's very good because you were in the forefront, right? Trying to sell the product. So you were talking with the customers, you were understanding their needs. And lots, yeah. you, you still, I believe you still do, do that a lot, like with enterprise clients and so on. So that's very important, isn't it? I think that's a very good tip for the, those that are listening. 
a company like SEMrush, who are eight years ago, nine years ago, you still haven't had, you didn't have sales process, so you went through all of that. You learned, you failed. So I think that's important that people are really worried about, oh, I cannot fail. I need to get it right. And it's not like just textbook stuff, isn't it? You need to experiment. You need to yeah. try to test it, right? Yes. And that's something that uh, the culture of the company uh, helped us a lot. So we have the, the agile philosophy, right? So we are flexible with all the changes that the industry are facing. And every team is a single uh, engine that is working, connected with the purposes and goals of the company, right? So being an agile company, not only from uh, the perspective of development, but also from the marketing perspective, working with, uh, for example, uh, Scrum, not only for developers, but for uh, the rest of the teams, uh, that help us a lot. Why? Because we, are, we don't have uh, that uh, hierarchy that, okay, this is the boss, I'm gonna do what the boss is saying, and I'm gonna go um, to my home and I'm gonna sleep well because it's gonna be his fault all the time. I'm not involved in the process. That's, that's not SEMrush, right? We, every single person in SEMrush, they have their own voice, they have their own opinions, um, because with this Scrum, uh, Scrum um, workflow, uh, we are allowing them, and they allowed me, to uh, express my own opinions, to, um, to have my own experiments, Yes, without experiments, you cannot escalate any process. So I have my experiments. I prove that they were right, or most of the time they were wrong. But if you are not wrong, you cannot escalate as, as well. So with, with this structure, uh, agile structure, we, you can do most of the things that we did in, in SEMrush. That's fantastic. So if I could resume that, would you say empower your team to give them uh, a voice so they can share their, their opinion, contribute, and obviously someone like you moderates those ideas, but you, that way you're empowering them and making them more motivated, right? Oh, yes, definitely. More motivated and engaged with the process. Yes, yes. I think that's, that's a nice word as well. Well, Fernando, you got, you, one of your specialities is competitive intelligence and competitor research. Recently, SEMrush has invested quite a bit in that, right? The market research, the competitor analysis, yeah. Is it a bit of your influence there or is it something that the, the company is leading to? Because you guys kind of like you got all the accolades that there are in the search industry. Are you guys looking to expand that a bit more going to in, in other competitor areas? Can you tell us about why, what's so important for SEMrush, those, those tools nowadays? Well, um, the story starts, I believe, a couple of years ago when we saw that the data that we provide, uh, it can be used by anyone right so we have so much data accumulated from uh, 145 countries and we have the knowledge about okay what is happening on the serps what is trending what is not the sources of information audiences so all that information it needs to be so it needs to have some purpose and we saw that uh, for example um, the media um, industry they are really hunger for having sources of information so we build this process. We have a huge PR team that is working a lot with, with data. With, for the traffic analytics, for example, tool, we are using a lot, lot of data scientists that are working, uh, providing news, uh, providing, so, uh, providing trending uh, news for, um, for media outlets. So I, I can say, for example, uh, during the last month, we uh, offer it and actually, actually we offered less than it was requested, around 50 uh, different topics in a month, and most of them were published, right? And I'm not, not speaking about the uh, tier three or tier four uh, media outlets. There are, most of them are tier one. I'm talking about uh, the New York Times, uh, Washington Post, Forbes, and those big new uh, outlets. So having that uh, in, into mind, we created this PR process. There are several uses for data. And the biggest one is, of course, competitor's analysis, but not the uh, usual competitor analysis that you are doing at your local level. We were focusing on analyzing industries, niches, to creating the, bank, the background for market analysis, to say, okay, this is your market share. You are the player number one in your city, or you are the player number 35 in your city, in your country. So 
to have to give all that perspective, uh, not for just one single industry, which is uh, SEO, right? Or um, all the digital marketing. Uh, we wanted to offer that to any other uh, parallel industry, the health industry, automotive industry, hospitality industry. And right now, uh, there are a lot of speakers that are not related to, uh, to SEO, for example, that are speaking using our, our numbers. So yes, that's the direction that we want to go. And we are investing a lot more and uh, we have in our backlog more tools to, to uh, grow there. I'm really looking forward to those tools because I have been using it, the, the market research, the new one with the custom analysis and so on. And, and it's very interesting, very interesting. Like not only you guys can, I love the quadrant one, like where you say the game oh, yeah, yeah. if they are leaders and so on and it can compare it over if they're moving quadrants or not and year over year. So it's, it's very interesting that I've used it in a few, in a few presentations last week. So it was really helpful. And it, it, I think the most interesting thing is that you guys not show just what, where they are and but why they are leaders. Like you do a perspective on backlinks, you do a perspective on uh, visibility, what kind of traffic are the leading traffic in that industry. So that is not just a, a tool to do competitive research. I think it's a very good sales tool as well for agencies to go into like if you do SEO, if you do paid search, if you do social because say you are in the automotive industry and you do a research and you find that most of the traffic in that industry come from social media, what you're going to offer for your client. So fantastic. Yeah, I think yeah. that, is, that is super. For, for, for pitching pro purposes, it's, uh, it's ideal. That's why in traffic analytics, we have that, um, that bottom that says uh, pitch mode, right? So you can pitch immediately. You don't need to create a PowerPoint presentation. Just press the pitch mode and go for all the details and yes, offer your, your services based on data. Well, looks like you know the tool and it's a very nice feature for those of guys that don't use it. It's, it does streamline the process of your sales team a lot, a lot. Well, you guys have, you mentioned about your studies, you've been featured in many, many news outlets. It's a strategy that I must confess, I try to copy with my clients in the sense of like providing data, trying to make my clients be the primary source of data like you guys were like through this pandemic as well you, you've been featured in many places through the data that you guys can provide but one one of the latest guides i wouldn't say guide or research actually research that you published research study yeah yeah coming back to seo a little bit <laughs> in the end this is about seo <laughs> this channel this the, the google penalty research that you guys did around uh, unnatural links can you tell us a bit more about that? How, do you, how was it compiled? Who was involved? Because it's a massive study. You, it's being published recently here in Brazil. I read in English. So can you comment a bit on that, on that research? Because I think it's very valuable for the industry. Oh, yes, of course. So um, basically the, the, the study, the research is made on a um, lot of um, domains. Actually, there are more than 700 domains that were manually uh, penalized uh, by Google. So th those were manual actions that uh, we wanted to identify how they got there, uh, what exactly was the industry that were, that were affected, and basically to understand the details inside of the, those manual actions and see through the time, through the uh, timeline, how they uh, went out of there, uh, what kind of a strategy, strategies they we were using. And we just, uh, I believe, uh, we get so many information about what is a manual action, how you can identify, how you need to uh, create a report what you need to write to Google in order to say, okay, I'm not going to do it again. Basically, a manual, a manual action, as uh, of course you, you know, is uh, when you are just um, not uh, following uh, Google's uh, rules. If you are not following Google's rules in terms of what is a link, a natural organic link, you are buying links, you are, um, I don't know, doing some... Uh, uh, you're uh, hiding uh, your, your, your links, you're buying uh, links from directories. So there are so many, so many markups that we take into account in uh, one of our tools that is called um, uh, link, uh, Backlink Audit. Yeah. So you can create from that tool 
all the list of the toxic backlinks, so we call them toxic backlinks because they are uh, not uh, good sources, they are not good links, and they are giving you a bad, um, a bad link, uh, link profile overall. So uh, saying that, Around uh, 10 teams uh, inside of SEMrush were, were, were working on that. We have uh, the data scientists. We have, of course, our editorial team. We have, of course, um, those, uh, some of the, oh, and that's, <coughs> it's not the final moment with that study. We're going to be following with that every single week. So we're going to have interviews with, uh, with the experts in, um, uh, in uh, manual action recoveries, All right. All right. Uh, we're going to have uh, more uh, answers and, 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 and questions and answers for, for that. So we're going to be following each week with something new related to that. Because it happened that a uh, lot, lot, lot of uh, websites, they were uh, penalized. They, they had manual, manual actions and most of them, they didn't did anything. So they say, okay, I'm just going to leave this. Uh, this website living their, his own life or I'm going to try to recover but there was just wait, waiting like three months, four months and in some cases like two years to do something. So we wanted to explain how they can um, make things better with their websites. Well, it, well as you know in, in SEO it's a very I would say controversial subject, the manual actions, the algorithmic uh, uh, penalties as well, but from our experience, if it's manual, you really got to act because Google's telling you it's being done by the manual reviewers, as you guys know, and you have tracked up on it, so then you shouldn't wait. I think the most difficult yeah. ones are the algorithmic ones that you have to assume based on analyzing the link scheme directives and then acting upon it. But it surprises me that you guys found that out that many people were like overseeing it and just leaving out, okay, I've got a penalty, don't worry. It's, it's strange. Yeah, no, but, 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 but you know why? Um, and yes, it sounds very, very strange, but kind of makes sense for some of them because they have a high level of operations. There's a lot of money involved um, in, in, the, in their website and they have some business right now. And the manual penalty is not for the whole website, but just for uh, some pages of the, of the site. And they are afraid to... Um, to send the recovery letter to, to Google because they think that, okay, maybe everything is not in the, in the place. Um, I'm gonna send it the, the recovery uh, letter to Google and they're gonna penalize the whole site. So I just gonna have those pages uh, uh, with the manual action, but uh, please don't touch the rest of the site. So I'm not gonna do anything. So there are a lot of those cases because uh, you know, mm -hmm. in, the manual, in the manual action uh, section in, in Search Console, you have there just the sample of links that you were penalized. But in most of the cases, you don't have anything. You have only the, the message saying your sure. website was manually penalized and you need to say, oh my God, I have 100,000 URLs. Where exactly <laughs> I'm, I'm, I made a mistake. So you need to do a site audit, a backlink audit, you need to check everywhere. And of course, if you are the, um, I don't know, the, uh, the admin of the, the website, I believe you know where exactly you failed, what exactly was happening, yeah. what kind of uh, simulations you were doing, but yes. Or if your agency was doing something odd, if you've got an agency, <laughs> guys, yeah, well, it's there. And I, I think That's a really good, probably. Yeah, a very good starting point is SEMrush Backlink Audit Tool. It does give a very good idea of the worst, the toxic, if you go for toxic score, up to the 100 and it go down. I would say from 100 to 80, just get rid of all of them because they're definitely not good. Below that, I do always recommend, and that's what my team does, we do manually analyze them because some of them might not be, so that's how we work, but it's a very, very interesting tool to help you streamline the process. It's definitely, definitely in our toolbox. <laughs> and something that really helps is to have of course, more sources of, of links. Uh, that's why you can integrate your search console or yeah. you can in integrate the largest database of links, which is Majestic. You can integrate Majestic, Search Console, or whatever other tool that have a lot of links, put it there, uh, run the uh, link, um, the backlink audit there, and you will have the results that, that you want. Because in some cases, of course, 
uh, even the Google Search Console is not checking all the um, all the backlinks that that you have. So you need to have more 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 data. In that, that's a very good important in very important topic like integrating at least Search Console because going back to what the, the Google guy said at PubCon last year, I can't remember his name. It's like the most important links is the one that are the ones reported by Search Console. So you must yeah. integrate. You must integrate. Uh, for those of you that don't know Majestic, it's a link building tool. It's not very popular down here in Brazil. I know most of you guys won't know it, but it's also someone that you should look into, to, especially when you can integrate with, with SEMrush. Fernando, moving away a bit from technicalities and so on, you are a guy that travels a lot around the world nowadays, speaking at events, you keynoted in Spain, Germany, all over the world. Is there a list of places that you still want to be, you want to keynote at? I don't know, just, it's my curiosity, that one. <laughs> I was supposed to be in, in Brazil, you know, in uh, when it, it was, in, in July. For our retail event, yes. E-commerce Brazil. Yes, I believe it was in June, in June. So yeah, this yeah. week I was, I was supposed to be in Brazil. Oh, yes, no. yes. You see, we're supposed it's to have our, our beer together now instead of having this interview. <laughs> yes, but for some reason that it was happened. But yes, Brazil, of course, is my uh, number one place. And not, not because we're talking right now, but I was so excited to be in, 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 in Brazil in uh, in june it's kind of cold right now no right? i'm wearing my my sweater like a jumper like it, it is a bit cold yeah <laughs> a bit cold. oh imagine well here in prague the czech republic is kind of cold as well but i believe you can feel bit better in, in in brazil of course um the the second place that i that i wanted to be it was in the north pole so any, any yes, yes, yes conferences there and the seo north pole there is <laughs> Yes, yes, okay. actually, yes. So it was uh, a, a conference there as well. You, you need to, to travel to, to Norway. From Nor Norway, take um, a boat, this one with nuclear uh, engines to uh, melt down the, the ice. So it, it, it was supposed to be fantastic as, as, as well. Um, yes, definitely. Um, I was in around uh, 65 countries the last five years doing conferences. Uh, you know, basically every week was like three or four countries per, per week. But the last three months I'm at home, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> doing, yes, and, I, and I'm do, not doing less conferences because most of the conferences are right now are online. Wow. Well, most, all of the conferences are yeah. online. Yeah, true. But um, I, have the, I have the possibility to be with my, with my kids at home. I didn't have that at, in, in the past. But right now, I'm so, so, uh, I don't know, uh, grateful that I can be home these, these days, yeah. In, in still in events, what was the most unique or a couple of most unique events that you were in? I have my one I will share in a minute. Let's see if we can, yeah. what were the most, you told me many times that we, when we met, you told me about very unique ones. What were the most unique ones that you've been to, right? At least two, to, to tell the people know about it. Well, I'm not going to mention our, our own events because in SEMrush we produce a yeah. lot of events and they're amazing, I need to say that. But um, I have uh, two. Uh, the first one is, is of course, um, hotel, a conversion hotel that is in, in, in the Netherlands. Conversion hotels, I believe in, it's in the island of uh, Elmex, uh, Telmex, Telmex, I, I believe. It's fantastic, a fantastic place where um, most of the speakers in, in Europe, United States, when there is for 300 or 400 people, it's just a hotel in an island. You need to get out in, in, into a boat to get, to get there. And there are just two days of entire mar digital marketing. And of course, it's conversion is for basically for CROs. But uh, if you are as an SEO guy, uh, people are, are, are gonna still talk to you, but they're gonna say, ah, SEO people, you don't know nothing. <laughs> Everything is conversion, and they're gonna they're gonna be in in some cases they're really right about it because it's not only about traffic measuring the analytics it's about getting people um, do something in your website right and with the UX experience. So it's fantastic for having this kind of discussions. It's really amazing, and of course uh, there is an an um, unconference at the at the midnight which starts. It's at uh, 48 hours, 
And when I say 48 hours, it's 48 hours. You don't get to, in, into bed, nonstop. At the midnight, they start the unconference with beers. Uh, most of the speakers are, of course, drunk and started speaking about real, real stuff. So that's, that, that's a brilliant one. The second one, I will say, where you can meet most of, uh, most of the interesting people all around the, the, the planet, uh, for me, it was in orbit in, um, in Slovenia. So, yeah, it's, it's in Porto Rosso, Slovenia, a magnificent, a magnificent hotel. Um, you can see the, the sea there. And you have around 100 speakers in, of course, on a hotel, and you can you can meet them, you can talk talk to them, and basically the place, <clears throat> the whole city is so small that you will be walking around the city with them. You are gonna meet with them all all over the place. So these two conferences for me are just the the game changers. Yeah, well, I was I was hoping that you talked about the, for the people. Who, to know about conversion hotel when you told me i was like i have to get there it was on my list for this year so i had to oh shit, no this year i won't be able but next year will come yeah mind you i'll share as well it's like i wouldn't say about the summer jams because that is not fair it's just like on another level what you guys do yeah. what we did in in, in st petersburg in uh iceland in finland not iceland uh, finland helsinki yeah Fortunately, I couldn't make it to last year in Portugal. I know that was fantastic. All the, all the guys said it was. It was. Uh, we were opening the office here in Sao Paulo, so I couldn't make it. But on like ordinary events, I'd say stay on the beach. I was out of oh, my mind on that beach. one. Yes. That one is just like yes. 10 o'clock in the morning, people serving you beers, then gin and tonics. And, <laughs> and the place is amazing, yeah. right? It's fantastic. Yeah, oh my God, stay on the beach, yes. Yeah, I was really looking What is the second one? Huh? Second one. And your second? Yeah. RD Summit here in Brazil. It is an amazing... RD event. Summit. It's massive. Oh, in Fl Fl Florianopolis, right? Yeah, Florianopolis, yeah. It, it, it is like the guys that organize it from RD Station, the, the Resultados Digitais, sorry. They really yeah. put it together there, you know. They make you... I had the pleasure to speak there. Uh, a couple of years ago, it was massive. It wasn't even the main and uh, the main floor, and it was like three thousand people where I was speaking. Wow! So, yeah, yeah. And it's it's the way we like it, you know. Uh, when it ends the day about six ish, free beer and you know shows, and it's uh, the, the network is is incredible. A lot of like big guys spoke there, and uh, Mary Haynes, Will Reynolds. So it, it is a well. It, it, it's, it, I'm proud because it's in Brazil and it's one of the biggest in the world and, yeah. and the, the atmosphere is very nice and the, if you haven't been to Florianopolis you have to go there you know it's, it's an amazing city and there's loads to do it's like you, Actually, you go there I hear that that's the biggest in digital marketing right worldwide uh, one, of, one of the biggest because last time when I was there uh, two years ago it was 12,000 people <clears throat> 12,000. Yeah, that's e commerce Brazil, that's it's bigger. So, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, it's, it's also massive. It's, yeah, it's good. Like, I think that they're in the, in the industry here in Brazil, there are some, some big, big events. And yeah, you, you, people should, should, should look at it into like with more proud. We're, we, we Brazilians should be more proud of it. You know, we're always like, oh, Brighton SEO and this, that, and the other retail in the in the u.s but we've still we've got some nice nice events here nice events yeah, yeah Fernando, yeah. we're coming up to the last part of our interview we uh we're living in unprecedented times like for those of you that are in the future watching this there's a pandemic coronavirus covid19 we're all locked down that's why fernando is in prague i'm in sao paulo how are you coping with your team how how you guys getting along and anything you could share to like a little tip or motivate the other entrepreneurs, other agencies that are going through this difficult time as well. Oh yes, basically um, we <clears throat> have all uh, every every single day uh, stand-ups at least for 15 minutes, uh, for 20 minutes. The first uh, moment when you open your uh, wherever you have uh, Microsoft Teams, uh, Zoom, or Hangouts, uh, the first five five minutes, just ask your team how they are, how they're feeling, uh, they are tired. So 
just be flexible with all the people as much as you're gonna have, not only with your team, but also with your partners. This is the time to be more uh, flexible with everyone. If you cannot uh, do something, there is nothing bad with it. Uh, everybody's in this situation, but your colleagues, the people who are most related to you, you need to have that sixth, sixth sense and see, okay, you, you know what, you need to rest. Uh, Friday, uh, 12, uh, 12 p.m., just uh, close the computer and don't uh, reply to any uh, more emails. So be that, that direct with your team and they're just gonna be saying, oh my God, okay, yes, I need, I need, I need to do this. Because we found out that we are working not uh, eight hours, right? Not six hours. You rem remember, we, we, we were working uh, like for six hours. Right now, we, we are working like for 12 hours, 16 hours and we are working more than, than we uh, s s supposed to. So this is the time for, uh, for teams, and we are doing um, with the teams inside of Sembrush, for example, with my teams, uh, that we say, hi, how are you? Just tell me what happened with, with you today, yesterday. Uh, okay, enjoy the rest of the day. Let's be in touch, at least 15, 15 minutes. And don't have that many uh, meetings online because <clears throat> you need to be more um, productive, uh, productive, of course. Well, I'm going to take some of those tips for myself because I slowed down right now. In the first month or so, I've been just like, I want to do everything. I'm at home, so I might as well work. But I found out that past couple of weeks that, yes, Friday, stop working as early as you can. Yep. Do not engage in anything. So what I'm doing, I'm not even touching my computer, you know, I just leave it closed. So... Yeah, very, very valuable tips. I think people will be, be glad to see that. They coming from such a respected company and a respected head of communications like you with the team that you have. I think that's a very valuable information. You know, guys, SEM Rush is what it is because they really value their employees, their people. So that's lessons to be learned there. Definitely, definitely. So it's a company that inspires me and I hopefully will inspire you guys listening to Fernando. Hopefully I'll get more guys from the team to, to be interviewed here. But Fernando, so the, the last bit, last bit, uh, we could talk here the whole day, but you know, we got to get on with our lives as well. Okay. <laughs> Till Tuesday, right? <laughs> uh, the, the, the two little jokes that are not games that I normally do with the team, with the interviews, uh, a phrase that you would tattoo. I normally use the people in Brazil know that I say the basico avançado, it's the basic is advanced. It's something that I carry on, like uh, it's a philosophy of work. But any any phrase that you think it's that motivates you, or it's I don't know anything that a phrase that you tattoo because you're gonna you're gonna have to tattoo to come back to the next interview. <laughs> oh, nice! I'm prepared for that. <clears throat> and the phrase that that I have in my mind all the time for a tattoo, you know, is work hard, party harder. <laughs> Very nice one. I think I'm going to get a space here and tattoo that as well because that <laughs> is very, very nice phrase. And to end things up here, the, the one word game. I'm going to give you a word. You give me a definition around it. Yeah. So digital marketing. Passion. Sam Rush. Love. Family. Uh, union. Your kids, I don't know their names, so I just said to see your kids. <laughs> yes, Sofia Isabella, uh, peace. Ah, that's good. Fernando, thank you very much. It was a pleasure interviewing you. I really wish you can, we can get together pretty soon to catch up. We already, we already talked a little bit, but you know, the usual beer and you know, an event. So once again, thank you very much. Hope you, your family are staying safe and we'll continue in touch as we as soon as we can and yeah if any final words that you'd like to to leave for the for the audience oh yes felipe it's always a pleasure to to meet you to to speak with you um i have planned so many things for this year i believe you as well uh, i wanted to do a lot of stuff with you as well in latin america this year but i believe we're just going to be postponing it for the next uh, the next year and please stay safe this is a very special, I want to say special, this is a very strange time that we are all living, 
And of course, uh, if you need anything from, from us, from SEMRAS and from all the people, actually, this is the, um, the, um, the help that we wanted to give to all the people, all our communication tool, yes, I'm head of the communi communications, all the communications tool through social media, social media tracker are now for free for everybody. So you can go to SEMRAS and use them for free. If you want to schedule your posts, you want to track your competitors online, if you want to create your ad campaigns, Facebook ad campaigns, you can do it for free inside of Sembra. So just uh, use them, you don't need to pay for it. Um, why is that? Because basically, you are at home, all the communications are right now happening in social media. So be more social, use more social tools. Excellent. Um, if for this, pessoal, this for Fernando Angulo, Head de Communications da SM Rush, mais um papo incrível, deu dicas aí que a ferramenta está gratuita, vou publicar esse vídeo o mais rápido possível para todo mundo poder aproveitar e não se esqueça de inscrever aqui no canal. Até a próxima aqui no Hanging with the Pros.